Hi, I'm Mark and I've been teaching piano on YouTube for 10 years. Today, I will teach you as much piano as I can in one hour. In order to do that, I cannot repeat myself because it will take too much time. So pay attention and if there's something you didn't get, simply rewind a little bit. Good, so we're gonna start in the beginning with the name of the notes. We've got 12 notes in a segment. This is one segment, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve notes. But these notes carry 21 different names. So if you don't know all of these names, pay attention now. When playing the piano, we like to orient ourselves from this note until that note. So I'm going to start with the white notes first. And their names are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. If I'm continuing on, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, etc. Okay, basically the notes are A until G. So these are the first seven notes that you will learn. Then there's two different types of names. We have the sharps, which we indicate with a little hashtag. And we have the flats, which we indicate with something that looks a little bit like a B. Now, I told you there's 21 note names, so we have these seven. We also have seven sharps and seven flats. In order to call out any of these notes in sharp or flat, you're going to start with the name of the note, so C and then sharp, D sharp, etc. So let's write that down. Here we go. C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and B sharp. We can do the same for flats, C flat, etc. Good, and these are all of the 21 note names. Now you may think, Mark, that's great, but where can I find a C sharp or where can I find an E flat? Well, that's super easy. If you move to the regular note names, so to the wide notes, you can pick any note and it doesn't matter which one. And if you want to move it to a sharp, you simply go one step up. And if you want to move to a flat, you go one step down. So let's look at the piano and see what that looks like. So let's take the most easy example, the C right here. If I want to go to a sharp, so a C sharp, I go one step up. If I want to go to a flat, C flat, I go one step down. Now what is up and what is down? Down is to the left of the piano, up is to the right of the piano. In order to do that, move your finger from here, because now you would go up like that. Move it in between the white and the blacks, okay? And now one step is simply the next note. So if I have a C right here and I want to go up to C sharp, I go up one step. Up means to the right. And I end up on this note right here, C sharp. If I want to go to C flat, I go one step to the left. And I end up on this note right here. Now, why is it important to only go one step? And why is it important to be between the notes right here? Because as you can see, from C to C sharp, I'm moving from a white to a black note. Whereas from C to C flat, I'm moving from a white to a white note. Let's do another example, maybe G. So I go in between the notes. Up, one step up is G sharp. One step down is G flat. Now, obviously, most of these notes carry double names, okay? Because I can go down from G to G flat, but I could also start on F and go up to F sharp. Good, so to sum up, we have 21 different note names, C, D, E, F, G, A, are all of the white notes, and then we have the sharps and the flats, seven a pop as well. Good, so now that you hopefully know the name of all of the keys on the piano, we have to look at scale. And a scale is a combination of a few notes that actually belong together. So an example of a scale is this, which you're probably familiar with. Okay, now we call this a major scale. Okay, and there's a reason for that. I'll get to that in a bit. And we actually have 12 of these major scales. Every single node has a major scale attached to them. So here, that's for C because we start on a C, but we can also go to D, E, etc. Okay, so let me tell you the requirements for a major scale. So the first requirement for a major scale is that it has seven notes. Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hmm. 
that doesn't seem to work, right? Well, this note is actually the same note as this note because I'm playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, so the skill only consists out of these notes right here, but when you play it, you usually end up on the note where you begin. So the C major skill has seven notes, C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. The second requirement is the distance between the notes in steps. We have two steps, two steps, one step, two steps, two steps, two steps, and one step. So let's have a look. Remember the steps when I was here and I went one step up, I ended up on this note. So right now we start on C, we do two steps. So we skip a note and we move to that note. Now we do another two steps. Now we do one step. Now we do two steps. Two steps. Two steps. And then if you want to end up on that, on that bass note, another one step. Okay, so two, two, one, two, 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 one. And the last thing to keep in mind, it's not really a requirement, is there's 12 scales like this because we can start on any of the notes on the piano and we have 12 notes that we keep in mind. So if we look at the piano in this area right here, all of these notes have scales attached to them. All of these notes have a major skill attached to them. So what is the point of a skill? The point is that you have to pick a skill and what it will basically do, as I taught you before on the board, is you have seven notes that you're playing, but you also have five notes that you're not playing. So in the beginning, when you start to play the piano, you don't play super advanced pieces, you will notice that only these seven notes will be played if you play in the C major skill and the other notes will be ignored. So the basic idea of the skill is that you get a, a recipe and they say, look, we have these seven ingredients, so you can mix them however you like, but these other five you should not touch. If you put in these other five ingredients, it will sound bad. So to give you an example, if I'm just playing wide notes right here. Right, sounds pretty nice. Who? That sounds a little bit weird. Why? Because this note isn't in the scale. So in the basses, most pop songs you hear on the radio or whatever, they will have the seven notes only and they will stick to that scale. Whether it's a C major scale, or an E, or an F, that doesn't matter, but they pick a scale and stick to it. I want to move on to another type of scale, last skill we're going to do in this lesson, which is the minor skill. Okay, has a few requirements as well. Again, seven notes, but the whole design of the skill is different. So let's have a look right here. And that's something super easy that I want you to remember, to remember the skills. So remember how I played the C major scale right here? It's just wide notes, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If you want to figure out the um, recipe, basically, for a minor scale, what you do is you're not going to start on C, you're actually going to start on A, and then you play all the wide notes up until A. As you can hear, it sounds a lot different than the C major scale. Okay, they sound a little bit different. So let's figure out these steps. We start here on A and then we go there. So that's two steps. One, two, two, one, two, two. Good. Minor scale, two, one, two, two, one, two, two. So we can now start on any other note and use this recipe, this pattern, and then we will get there. Again, there's 12 minor skills as well. Now, something that's super important when talking about skills, as well as talking about chords, which we're gonna do in a little bit, is the root. The root is super important. And the root simply means where we focus on where we get our scale or our chord from. So if it's a C major scale, 
the root is the C. Okay, we're going to play that C. That's going to be our root. Now, it doesn't matter if the C is here or there or there. It will still be the root of that scale because it's a music theory thing. It's not necessarily where it's being played on the piano. All of these C's work in the same way. So this is a C major scale, but this is a C major scale as well. We're just playing it a little bit higher. So the root, super important. How do you find the root? Well, you simply have a look at the name of the scale or the chord, which we're going to see in a bit, that you're playing. So C major scale, the root will be the C. A minor scale, the root will be the A. And an F chord, the root will be the F. So what's super important is when you apply this pattern that we're going to start at the root and then we're going to take two steps. Because if we start on any other note than the root, it will get messed up and we will end up with something completely different, something that you probably do not want to end up with. So I've been talking about chords a little bit. Let's have a look at what a chord really is and then let's see how to use them. So a chord is simply a combination of three, four or five notes being played at the same time or at different times. Sometimes you don't even have to play all of the notes, but the rule is when you play a note that's not in the chord, it's no longer that chord. It sounds very abstract, so let's have a little look at the piano and play the first chord that most people learn when playing the piano. And it's this chord right here, it's a C major chord. Now, as I told you before, we have a root. In this case, that's the C. C major chord consists out of three notes, C, E and G. And I don't have to play them at the same time. So I can, and it's a C major chord, but I could also play them one at a time. I could also mix them up and it's still a C major chord. What you have to keep in mind is that for a major chord, there are a couple of rules. The first rule is we have three notes in the chord, no less, no more. The second rule is that there's a certain distance between the notes and that distance is four steps and then three steps. Now you have to always keep in mind that you have to start at the root. So let's have a look at the piano again. We have our root right here, the C. We're going to take four steps. One, two, three, four. Play that note. So now we have C and E, and now we're going to take one, two, three steps, and we end up on a C major chord. Now we can do this for any note. F sharp, we take one, two, three, four steps, one, two, three, and we end up on our F sharp major chord. So how do we call these chords? We basically put the root right here and then we have the name of the chord. Okay, so this you can put in any note you want. E flat, major chord. F sharp, major chord. D, major chord. Now, as soon as you have that root, you're going to apply this pattern. So if you have a D major chord, you better start on D and then you count four steps up and another three steps up. When we play the chord like this, let's take the D as example, D, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, right here, D major. When we play this chord with the root of the chord on the bottom, on the left of the piano, we call this a root position chord. Because the chord is being played in a position with the root on the bottom. So we can simply use that technique to count out the notes. Now every major chord has three different ways of being played in the basses and then there's more ways later on. So let's have a look at these different ways. I want to take the example of the C major chord. So we have C which is the root at the left and then we have the next note, the E and then the G. Now we can also simply 
continue this and we put the C on the top. I will show you this on the piano later. And then we can continue this again. Now we have the C in the middle. Now if I would continue this again, we have a different one yet again, but it is actually the same as the root position. C, E, G, C, E, G. So this one doesn't count. We have a very simple way of talking about these chords. Root position chord. This, putting the C on the end, we call this the first inversion. So when talking about inversions, we actually talk about putting a chord in a different order. And then when we do this again, what do you think that's called? We did it for the second time, so now it's the second inversion. Let's put this into practice on piano. We're going to start with the root position chord of C. We start on C and then we get E and G on top. Now, if we apply this, what we have to do is we release the C and we actually put it on top. So now you hear that C a little bit better than when it's being played right here because it's on the top, it's a bit more bright, a bit more popping. So now we're in a first inversion, but it's still a C major chord because it has the C, the E and the G in the chord. And that's the most important rule. Releasing the E, putting that on top, we still have C major, but it's in the second inversion. What is important to understand, both when you're trying to play a chord, as well as when you're trying to recognize a chord, is that as soon as you move into these inversions, the rule of four steps and three steps dissipates. Because look, I start here now, one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four. So that doesn't work anymore. Okay, so always keep that in mind. If I want to continue with this, I release the G and I put it on the top and I'm back to root position. Okay, root, first, second, root. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's see if we actually get to that in this one hour lesson. So that's the major chords done with. So that's the major chords done with. For now, I want to move on to minor chords and then I want to talk a little bit about how all of these chords are connected and what we can do with them. So the minor chord is the next chord I want to talk about. It has a few characteristics as well. Three notes. And when starting on the root, again, this is important. There's going to be three steps and then four. Okay, so four and three for major, three and four for minor. Let's see what happens. Basically, if we add all of these steps together, the four from the major and the three, and a three from the minor and a four, you can already figure out that the last note is gonna be the same. So for C, for C major, we have C and G, and for C minor, we also have C and G. It's the middle note that matters. So for major, one, two, three, four saps, and for minor, only three. So C, one, two, three, E flat, and then one, two, three, four, and we get this chord right here, the C minor chord. Again, we can apply the inversion. So this is root position, first inversion, second inversion, and root position again. Want to go to major, drop the middle note, and we have a major chord. So now let's see why it's important to learn these chords. Well, we have these things that we call chord progressions. And a chord progression is basically a small instruction telling you which chords to play. In a lot of chord progressions, we find four chords. So maybe F minor, A flat, E flat, and D flat. And after D flat, you go back to F minor and you play the whole thing again. So let's see what happens when we play that. Ah, we end up with Hello by Adele. Hello. It's me. So that's basically what a chord progression does. Now, you may be wondering, hmm, so I thought it would only be major chords or, or only minor chords, but there's major and minor chords here. How does that work? Well, in order to figure that out, 
let's write out these chords. So I'm going to start with the root just to make it easy. So now let's figure out how to play these chords. So the first one is minor F. So we have to put one, two, three and one, two, three, four. So we end up with F, A flat and C. I'm going to put that in. Cool. So that's our F minor chord. Let's do the same for A flat, but now it's major. Okay. We end up right here. A flat, C and E flat. Four steps and then three. I think your memory is pretty good. So let's do a few more. E flat, G, B flat, and then D flat, F, A flat. So let's put these on the board and then don't worry, I'll get back to them in a little bit. So these are basically the chords that we are playing. These are the notes that are part of the chord. Okay, so let's play that slowly so you can see. Keep in mind the point is not really for me to teach you how to play Hello by Adele. It's more of a theory lesson, but F A flat C and then we'll be moving on to A flat C E flat E flat G B flat and D flat F A flat. Now one of the things that's of interest to me is that I can actually see these notes in different places. Look. I have a C here and there, I have A flat here and there, I have E flat here and there, okay? So what I want to do right now is I want to eliminate all of the doubles. So A flat, I've got that there and there, so these can go. I've got a C already and I've got an E flat already, okay? And I want to do this if possible until there's only seven notes left. F is double as well. So now we only have seven notes left and it's just a bunch of notes right now. So let's put them in order. Usually you would start on C. So we're going to copy them down on the board right here. We have C, D flat. And what we now end up with is the scale that Hello by Adele is being played in. Now, the chance that this is actually a scale starting on C, so that it's a C scale, is one in seven, because we have seven notes and I picked the C to start on. So let's see if that makes any sense at all. Um, here we go. C, D flat, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So, hmm, that doesn't really sound like this or like that, okay? So it's probably not a major or a minor skill if this is even correct. So usually when this happens, the problem is that we started on the wrong note. So you can try to start on the next one. And that also sounds weird. Next one. Hmm, almost maybe. No, not really. Aha, if we start on A flat, we actually get a really nice sound. So this one is in an A flat major key. Now, obviously, if you get a bit more advanced in playing piano and doing music theory, as soon as you look at these notes, you will immediately recognize the flats and the normal notes, and you will know off by heart that that's an A flat major key. But for now, if you're able to follow this process, Kudos to you, because it's not the easiest thing. So let me quickly summarize what I just did, because this is going really quick, and then I want to be moving on. But keep in mind, um, in the course, I know I keep on saying that, but it's, it's really a nice course. I've gotten some great reviews in. I take a few hours to explain this and how to do this, and we're going to practice it, and you get to do this yourself, and I will read you the answers and see if you got it correct and all kind of stuff. So... I'm going through it really quick because I want to teach you as much piano as I can in one hour. But for now, let's quickly summarize what I did. I picked the chords from a song, in this case, Hello by Adele. I wrote out all of the notes that I can find in the chords. Then I eliminated the double notes, so I was only left with seven notes. And then I put them in order, C, D, E, F, G, A, B the alphabetical order. And I can pick any note to start on, that doesn't matter, but the order has to be alphabetical. 
And then I simply played all of these notes as a root position until I found out that A flat is actually the key I should be playing in. So that's the relationship between chords and skills. You can actually put different type of chords in a skill. Now I want to have a look at which kind of chords we can find in a major skill. In order to do that, let's have a look at the C major skill. Now, the chords that we can find in this skill have to either be major or minor. I can already put the, uh, the last note in here because we know that major and minor chords have the same note. So there's definitely going to be a G, an A, a B, and I can keep on writing this in alphabetical order as well. C, D, E, F, no problem. Okay, all of these notes have to be one of these notes. Okay, I cannot put E sharp because there's no E sharp. I cannot put B flat because there's no B flat. Now all I have to do is find the middle note and guess what? They're also alphabetical. Now we know C, E, G to be the C major chord. So we know that that's in there. And then I can simply continue F, G, A, B, C, D. And now we simply have all of the chords. Are these chords major or minor? That's interesting to figure out. I hope that you remember that this one is major. So I'll put that behind. But now let's see what we get. We've got C, E, G. That's the first chord. It's major. And now I can simply keep on moving my hands like this. Okay, so C, E, G, D, F, A. So we have one, two, three steps, and then four. That's indicative of minor, remember? Major is one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Minor is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Okay, so we have major, minor, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Also minor, so let's write that down. Minor, minor, major, minor, minor, four and three, four and three. So two major chords, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and a minor chord. So the next few chords, major, major, minor. And now let's have a look at the final chord. Ooh, that one sounds weird. One, two, three, one, two, three. Hmm. Three and three is not a major, but it's also not a minor. So what kind of chord is this? Well, it's actually something we call a diminished chord. A diminished chord has three and three. Major has four and three, and minor has three and four. So you can imagine that all of these chords, the major, the minor, and the diminished, simply have three notes, but the distance between all of the notes is different, which is why they are different. We'll get over a few more chords in a little, but this is interesting to see. In a major scale, we have a major chord, a minor chord, a minor chord, a major chord, a major chord, and then again a minor chord, and a diminished chord. So how would you write that down if you don't want to write down all of these notes? Well, for major, we simply don't put anything. We agreed that's the basic chord, so we will just put a C. But for minor, we're going to put a little M. And for diminished, we're going to put dim. Okay? Diminished. So now that I removed this, you should be able to play this because you know which notes are in these chords. Now, the funny thing is that chords do not have a brother and a sister, basically. Chords are just their own thing. However, skills, major and minor skills, have what we call a relative skill. So how do we figure those out? It's super easy. We're going to write down all of the uh, notes and let's just say that we're doing sharps. But you can also do this with flats. It's absolutely fine. So let's presume these are not notes, but these are skills. So C major skill, C sharp major skill, D major skill, D sharp, etc. And as I've shown you before, the C major skill only has white keys, but the A minor skill 
also only has white keys. So the notes that you can find in the C major scale, you can also find them in the A minor scale. Therefore, A minor and C major are relative scales because they belong together. Now, luckily, we're not going to crisscross, you know, because that would just be the worst. So C belongs to A, C major belongs to A minor. And we can do that for any of these. And all we have to do is just keep on writing. So A, the next one is going to be A sharp, etc. So what this means is that all of the notes we can find in a D sharp major scale, we can also find in a C minor scale. All of the notes we can find in a G major scale, we can also find in an E minor scale. Now, why you need to know that, it's going to be a little bit too much time for this lesson. So again, I'll be referring you to the course. But for now, we're going to be having a look at transposing. So we're going to be transposing skills and transposing chords. Now, what does transposing mean? Well, basically it means that if I play River Flows in U, okay, um, I'm playing this and I think it's A major. Yeah, and if I would transpose it, I could, for instance, play it in C major. Okay, so we have the same song. but it's played with different notes. So what a lot of people do is they transpose a song, for instance, this River Flows in You song, which is originally written in A major, and they transpose it to C major because it's supposedly easier to play, because there's no black notes. I truly do not believe in this, um, so I'm really opposed of that. However, transposing can be very useful. For instance, if you want to sing to a song that is too high of pitch to you or too low of pitch. So maybe a girl wants to sing a song that's been written for a boy and she cannot go that low, right? Or a boy is trying to sing a, a song for a girl or maybe even a boy's song, but the dude is singing really high and he cannot reach that. Then we could actually write that down a few steps. So let's take the example of River Flows in You, which is an A uh, major. So we're going to put the A major uh, scale right here. Always super important to keep in mind that you have to add sharps or flats sometimes. So let's check that if it's correct. Yeah, that sounds correct. And I went to C major. Okay, so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So basically what we're doing is we are... Um, well, you can say we're going up or you could say we're going down because I'm starting here and then I could go down or I could go up. If I go up, there's a difference of three steps, okay? Three steps. And now we're going to do chord progressions and transposing at the same time. So hopefully everything will click um, because we're not just rewriting the notes. We're also going to have to rewrite the chords. And in order to do that, you have to kind of understand what these chords mean and how they work. So all we're going to do for this, for the right hand, is rewrite this little piece. Okay, so let's quickly write down these notes. So in this little bit, we have A, C sharp, A, G sharp, A, blah, blah, blah. And all we have to do in order to transpose this song is to replace these notes with these notes. So for every A, we're going to write a C. For every C sharp, we're going to write an E. Well, there's only one C sharp, so that helps. For every G sharp, we're going to write a B. And for every E, we have to write a G. And now we've transposed the whole melody line. So let's have a look at the piano again. Transposing that to C. I noticed that I forgot the D, D, F, so put a little F in there. Okay, so transposing a melody line, as you can see, can take quite a little bit of time because this is just a really small part of the song um, and we took quite some time to write these out. Now, the left hand is luckily just playing chords, 
So let's have a little look at what the left hand is playing, and then we can see how quickly that would be to rewrite. So let's have a look at the piano. We will play this. Okay, so the left hand is basically just playing two chords. F, C sharp, F sharp, and then D, A, D, even though in this song the E is being played, but that's just a little bit to make it a little bit prettier. But the basic chord is D, A, D. This is a new type of chord that we haven't seen before. F, C, F, because the root is repeated at the end. Um, and we call these five chords. So they're being played quite a lot on the piano. Uh, D, A, D. Okay, now after that we would get A, E, A. And even, uh, and after that we would get E, B, E. Just to make it complete. Now, we're not playing F, C, F, we're actually playing F sharp. So it's important to note that. Now the cool thing is that if I'm just playing these chords, I could also play the chords in the right hand as well. We will get the sound of this song. I hope you're familiar with it. If not, you can have a little listen on YouTube. So if I would just play chords and a little bit of a melody, you would get this. Okay. Okay, so you can hear that that's how the song is being played. Basically, we're just playing these chords. Okay, that's all being accomplished by putting a melody line on top of these chords. These chords do not change. Um, the last note changes a little bit sometimes because you remember likes to improvise a little bit and make it a little bit prettier. In essence, this is the entire song. So if you know these four chords, you technically can play River Flows in You by your rumor. Now all you have to do is put a little melody line on the right hand. Well, we transpose that melody line just before. Um, now we're going to transpose these chords and see what happens then. So we went from A to C. So we basically went three steps up. Okay, and we can do the same with these chords in order to rewrite them. So um, we're starting on F sharp minor, and then we have D major, A major, and E major. So we can simply rewrite those by going up three notes. So let's do the last one, E, one, two, three, we would end up on G. And then A, one, two, three, we would end up on C, D, we would end up on F, and uh, F sharp, we would end up on A minor. Okay. Ooh, now we got a lot of stuff on the board, but um, basically here are the chords. So F sharp minor will turn into A minor, D will turn into F, A will turn into C, E will turn into G. So now we give you the vibe of this song. This will take a little bit of getting used to for your ears, but now let's move to the same in a C major skill starting on A minor. Okay, we basically rewrote these chords. Now, if you would want to know the exact notes, you're going to go F sharp will become A. So for every F sharp you see, you put an A. For every A we see, we can put a C. For every E we see, we have to go three notes up, so that will be a G. And for every D, three notes up, we will have to put an F. For every C we go up, we would end up on E flat, because I made a little mistake, this is actually C sharp, of course. So uh, we end up on an E. And then for every B, we have to go up, we end up on a D. So the new chords are 
AEA, FCF, CGC, and GDG. So you can already see that if you know your skills and your chords and how to transpose, how to go back and forth between them, that it's actually really powerful because just by learning these chords, I can already make a song that sounds quite a lot like River Flows in You. Okay, just by playing these chords. So what I want to do, I'm going on vacation right now, but when I get back, I actually want to start doing some live videos on this YouTube channel in which I dare you to name any song, a pop song or a rock song that has a basic chord structure. And I will try to play that song within like, let's say 30 seconds or maybe one minute. I think that will be very, very cool. And, uh, and I hope that you would join me in those sessions. Leave a comment in the comment section down below to let me know if that's something that's of interest to you. Now, in order to finish this lesson up, I mean, we've almost got a whole hour done right now. I wanna show you how I'm playing basic chords. So, for instance, when I did the Adele song, like that, I played it an octave higher so you could actually see. All I'm doing is I'm playing that chord in the right hand. So, I'm going to make a little, little schedule here for you. This is my right hand. This is my left hand. Now, if you want to play a song just of the chords, you're going to play your chords in your right hand. And this can be root or an inversion. That doesn't matter. And you can also apply patterns to these chords. So you can play a few notes at the same time or you can play them all at the same time. In your left hand you're going to play something that we call an octave. You do not yet know what an octave is probably because I haven't talked about it in this video. Um, or we're going to play five chords. So to give you the formula for a five chord you're going to start on the root and then you're going to put seven steps and then you're going to put five steps and then we end up on a five chord. Okay. So in the case, so in the case of Adele, I like to keep it light in my left hand. So I'm not playing an octave, I'm actually playing a single note. Now, if you would want to play an octave, it simply means that you're going to play the same note twice, once in your pinky and once in your thumb. So we have an octave right here. So that would sound like this. Okay, um, because I usually play it an octave lower, because that's what an octave is, it's the distance between these notes. Usually I played an octave lower, I think it sounds too much, you know, you get so much grunt, so I just play a single note. To make it lighter. So your left hand can play an octave, a single note, or a five chord. How would it sound with a five chord? So playing this, basically, so playing this in the left hand. It sounds a little bit more grunty. Okay, a little bit more grunt. Like that. Okay, so quite cool. So the left hand is basically just playing usually an octave, a five chord, or a single note. You can also play them one at a time, as we've seen with River Flows in You. Like that. Now watch my left hand only. I'm just playing five chords and I'm playing the notes once at a time. So we can do that. So for the right hand, usually when you play a song with chords only, so for instance, the Hello by Adele, you can super easily sing on top of that. Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years you'd like to meet. If you want to play these chords, you're going to play your chords in your right hand. Now with Adele, I just play my root position chords. So the root is on the bottom, F, A flat, C. A flat, C, E flat, E flat, G, B flat, D flat, F, A flat. But you can also choose to play inversions. Like that, okay? And you can immediately notice that you get a little bit of a different sound to it. So you can experiment with that. And in the beginning, I really used to hate that because it's super difficult in the beginning to find your noise inversions. But eventually, um, you will get it. Now you can also apply a pattern. Or 
or for instance this. Right? So we see that quite a lot of times. For instance, in Clocks by Coldplay, we play these three simple chords. But there's a little bit of cheekiness going on because we play the middle chord twice as long. So actually we play this. Okay. So maybe you don't recognize it yet. I'm gonna start at the top note and move down and we get the pattern. So listen what happens. This is what I played before. And now I'm gonna apply the pattern in my right hand. Boom, and we got a song. If I wanna apply a pattern in the left hand, I'm gonna play these in three times, like this, so we get. Like that. Okay, so that's how easy most of these pop songs are. We have a Hello by Adele, simply four chords. Okay, we have chord play. Like that, uh, three chords only in this part of the song. So most of these pop songs, most of the songs you hear on the radio are super duper easy to play. So I guess this is it. This is as much as I could teach you in one hour. I decided to do a little bit of the note names, of course, to sort out and then do scales and chords and transposing because hopefully by now you have a really good understanding of how all of this stuff works. I know it went super duper quick because we're doing so much stuff in one hour. I take the whole of chapter one to explain this type of stuff um, in my in my virtual piano teacher course. And that chapter is almost 12 hours of video content. You can also find it on my website, pgmpiano.com. Um, there's a seven day trial on that website because I've actually got over 800 lessons for individual songs on that website as well. So there's a lot of content there. There's over 200 lessons with sheep music and you should check it out if you want to learn to play the piano. It's super cool. pgnpiano.com. I want to thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this lesson and I would love for you to stick here on the channel. Only subscribe to this channel if you actually enjoyed the lesson and want to see more. I hope to see you very soon and all I've got left to say is keep playing.